still in her dank cell, a bruised Marjorie is being read at ceaselessly from the seven-pointed star by Scepter Unella. Marjorie inquires about Loris's condition, but Unella says she must confess her sins first and moves to strike her. At that precise moment the High Sparrow steps in and stops Unella, ordering his acolyte to attend the Faith's other guests. His High Holiness admits that at times Unella takes her devotion too far, still Marjorie's questions concerning Loris remain unanswered. Instead, the High Septon mentions that Tommen misses his wife terribly, and that the love between husband and wife is sacrosanct, and that sins, however, have a way of leading decent people away from all things sacred and into wickedness. Marjorie claims she has committed no sins. The High Sparrow gently reprimands the Tyrell Queen, asking if she considers herself to be holy without sin. When Marjorie finally acquiesces that no one is perfect and that everyone makes mistakes, the High Sparrow assures her she's on the right path but has many miles left to go. Some time later, Marjorie is again brought to speak with the High Sparrow. He relates his story about how he began to reject the material world but Marjorie calls him out for quoting from the Book of the Stranger. She admits she isn't that familiar with the seven-pointed star, but Scepter Unella has been reading passages from it at her. The High Sparrow agrees that Unella has a habit of reading at people and finishes his story, allowing Marjorie to see Loris. Seeing that her brother has nearly given up hope, Marjorie encourages him to keep fighting. Eventually, the High Sparrow allows Tommen to visit Marjorie, who now appears clean and kempt, and unnervingly cheerful considering her recent ordeal. Marjorie professes to Tommen her newly found devotion to the faith. She admits that although she had always put on a kind and caring persona in the past, she had done so with ulterior motives. Upon being asked by Tommen of Loris, she states that he must atone for his sins. This convinces Tommen to unite the crown and the faith intent on bringing a new era for the Seven and for Westeros. Just before her own walk of atonement on the steps of the Great Sept of Baelor, her father, along with his army, and Jaime Lannister arrive in order to prevent her humiliation. Jaime threatens to incapacitate the Faith Militant by force, but before any hostility can occur, the High Sparrow announces King Tommen as a newly converted follower of the Faith and calls off Marjorie's atonement, claiming that she has done her part by bringing Tommen onto their side. The Queen Consort then joins her husband in a unification of the Baratheon monarchy and the Faith of the Seven. Marjorie is in the Sept reading from the Seven-Pointed Star when the High Sparrow arrives. They quote verses about the Mother together before discussing the poor. The High Sparrow then asks Marjorie why she has not been sharing the marriage bed with Tommen, prompting Marjorie to explain that the desires that once drove her no longer do. The High Sparrow responds that Marjorie has a duty to her king, country, and the gods she must produce an heir. The High Sparrow then reveals that he, fears, for her grandmother, stating that while she is a strong and powerful woman, she is also an unrepentant sinner. He tells Marjorie that she must bring her grandmother around to their way of thinking or else there will be consequences for, her body and soul. The implied threat is not lost on Marjorie. Under the supervision of Scepter Unella, Marjorie meets with Olena inside the Red Keep. Olena openly insults Scepter Unella whom Marjorie defends, saying she has been a true friend and teacher. Olena reacts with disgust, pulling Marjorie into another room in an attempt to have some privacy, but Scepter Unella follows them. Olena begins verbally attacking Scepter Unella, stating that she needs a good bashing. Once more, Marjorie comes to the Scepter's defense. Olena questions what the sparrows have done to her, and Marjorie replies that Olena marched against the gods. Olena argues that they marched for Marjorie and Loris's sake. Marjorie replies that the gods could have punished Olena and her allies for their blasphemy, but they instead showed mercy. Olena reminds Marjorie that Loris is still imprisoned and that that is hardly mercy. Marjorie assures her that Loris may return to Highgarden following his atonement, though he will have to renounce his titles and live the rest of his life in penitence. Olena is rightfully horrified by this due to the fact that Loris is the heir to Highgarden and believing that Marjorie's loyalties towards her family and house have weakened. Before she can say more, Marjorie kneels in front of her and urges her to return to Highgarden. Olena says that she will never leave Marjorie. Marjorie repeats her plea, this time with a marked sense of urgency, secretly slipping a piece of paper into her grandmother's hand. Understanding the silent message, Olena relents. She tells Marjorie that she will see her soon, and the two share a hug. During the hug, 
Marjorie's mask slips for a split second because of the emotion. After Olena leaves, Marjorie cheerfully asks Septa Unella if she would like to pray. Outside the room, Olena unfolds the note to find a rose, House Tyrell's sigil, drawn on it. This reassures her that Marjorie's true loyalty remains with her family. At Cersei and Loris's trial, Marjorie stands with her father in the Great Sept of Baelor, and watches from the sidelines as Loris renounces his allegiance to House Tyrell, confesses to his crimes and agrees to join the Sparrows. Presumably, Marjorie becomes heir to Highgarden for the final moments of her life after her brother's disinheritance. She comforts her father and restrains him from intervening when the Faith Militant begin carving the seven-pointed star into Loris's forehead. When Marjorie realizes Cersei is not present, the High Sparrow sends Lancel to bring her to the Sept by force. When Lancel himself does not return after a prolonged period of time, Marjorie suggests to the High Sparrow that Cersei's absence and that of her son indicates that she is plotting to harm them. Marjorie then attempts to evacuate the Sept, taking the frightened Loris with her. Clearly underestimating Cersei, the High Sparrow dismisses this notion and has his sparrows keep the Tyrell siblings from leaving the Sept, along with everyone else present. Powerless to do anything or reach her father in their final moments, Marjorie gives the High Sparrow a knowing look, angered at his lack of understanding and his ignorance of Cersei's unmatched cruelty. He then realizes their doom is nigh, and Marjorie clutches to her brother as the Sept erupts in an explosion of wildfire killing everyone inside, including Marjorie, Loris, and their father. Although Cersei is initially delighted in wiping out her enemies in the faith, and arrival in Marjorie, as a result of Marjorie's death, Tommen commits suicide after he sees the burning sept from his chambers, leading to Cersei seizing the Iron Throne. Without Marjorie to act as a link in the alliance between House Tyrell and House Lannister, and vengeful of her progeny's death at the hands of Cersei, Olena aligns Highgarden's forces with Daenerys Targaryen following a meeting with the Sand Snakes of Dawn.